ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. Getting tested for COVID-19 may not be as quick and easy as it once was. Good evening, I'm Steve Atkinson. The county is now limiting who can get tested at its free sites. Now, only those who have symptoms or fall in the high risk category can get a free test. As our ABC 10 reporter Mimi Alcala explains, a drive through testing clinic says it has plenty of supplies, quick results, and anyone can get tested, but for a price. Yeah, it was our first experience in San Diego County. COVID clinic's debut in San Diego was a little rocky back in April when Dr. Wilma Wooten, the county's public health officer, quickly shut down the original drive through testing site in Cardiff, saying the proper credentials to operate were not provided and test results were not immediately reported to the county. Yeah, since we were one of the first to open San Diego County, there were some things that uh, were brought to our attention that the county wanted. And so once we met each of the items that they were requesting, we'd be able to continue testing without any issues. Fast forward to today, CEO Matt Collins says COVID clinic has been running smoothly for months after reopening. Now offering drive through testing at two locations locally, downtown and in La Mesa. We try to test anyone that, that has to be tested. While many testing sites are now limited to those who have symptoms or fall in the high risk category, Collins says anyone can schedule an appointment to be tested at COVID clinic. Across the country, people have also reported major delays in test results. COVID Clinic offers three different tests and Collins says they do guarantee quick results. We understand how important it is to get a result quickly. The antibody and antigen tests come with rapid results in just 60 minutes for $150. While the nasal swab tests get sent to a lab, results can be provided within the same day, the next day or in two days, but it is a bit pricier. The price varies from $375 for a guaranteed two-day turnaround to $475 for a same-day turnaround. Um, we're seeing a lot of demand for that test as people need to travel. Collins says the clinic has partnered with a lab in Orange County to deliver accurate results without the delays. We're going to continue to strive to make testing accessible to San Diegans. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. And now to the latest numbers on the coronavirus here in our county. There are five new outbreaks, one each in a restaurant, a restaurant bar, a business, a grocery store, and a government setting. Also today, 228 new cases were reported today. That brings our total to just under 33,000. And there were no reported deaths, which is usually the case on Monday. So that number stands at 594. Ocean Beach is about to see enforcement ramp up when it comes to large gatherings. San Diego City Council member Jennifer Campbell told ABC 10 News today that an announcement on those large crowds in Ocean Beach is coming tomorrow at 1. We showed you these scenes last week as people packed Veterans Plaza. Campbell says it's clear more comprehensive action needs to be taken to keep San Diego safe. We'll let you know what they decide. Excuse me? That is President Trump abruptly being escorted from his daily news briefing, later saying a shooting had just occurred outside the White House. This is new video of the heavy police presence outside the White House following that incident. All of it unfolded just, well, we didn't see it, but all of that unfolded just before 3 o'clock our time. A Secret Service agent approached the president and told him to leave the briefing room. The president then followed the agent out, and just a few minutes later, the president then returned. There was a shooting outside of the White House, and seems to be very well under control. I'd like to thank the Secret Service for doing they're uh, always quick and very effective work, but there was an actual shooting and uh, somebody's been taken to the hospital. I don't know the condition of the person. President said he was taken to the Oval Office and said he was not shaken by the incident. As more states decide to reopen their schools, a growing number of children are becoming infected with the coronavirus. 100,000 children tested positive in just the last two weeks of July alone. And as ABC's Romina Puga reports, cases are still rising in half of all states, and so is the death toll. With over 163,000 lives now lost in the U.S. to COVID-19, Dr. Deborah Burks alerting governors that there's significant mortality, primarily from Texas, Florida, and California. Those three states account for about 50% of all the mortality we're seeing. And with more than 5 million confirmed cases across the country, ABC's David Muir pressed Dr. Anthony Fauci on President Trump's claim that the virus is going away. 
But at 50, 60, 70,000 cases a day, it's not disappearing at the moment. All you've got to do is look at the data, David. The virus is telling us what it can and will do if we don't confront it properly. Meantime, the number of children infected is growing. An American Academy of Pediatrics report says 380,000 children have tested positive. Nearly 100,000 of those in the last two weeks of July. This just as schools get underway. Across Florida, thousands of students are back in the classroom. Masks are encouraged, but not required. We're encouraging, if possible, the face-to-face -face because we know that that's the best that, that, that our children uh, can receive. Some teachers are suing the state. We've been reckless with bars and beaches and restaurants, and we simply cannot be reckless with our public schools. The return to the classroom is a difficult decision for parents. In rural Wisconsin, this protest for in-person learning. I'm really concerned about the kids that are just trying to learn how to read. They either don't have internet access because we are in such a rural environment, or they just don't have the family structure that they need to be safe and to have really learn anything. And the college football season is still up in the air. The Power Five commissioners are deciding whether to cancel or postpone the season. President Trump weighing in, tweeting the student athletes have been working too hard for their season to be canceled and joining the athletes with their hashtag we want to play. That decision on fall sports is said to be decided by Tuesday, depending on whether the university presidents can come to an agreement. In Colorado, Romina Puga, ABC News. I think in that big picture context, I think it'll be better for everybody and deep down they understand it. San Diego State sports fans are now dealing with another season impacted by coronavirus. Our ABC 10 News reporter Laura Acevedo has reaction from some of those closest to the school's athletics. It was news that some of the biggest Aztec fans were already expecting. It was kind of like a punch to the gut, but it wasn't like a totally unexpected one. Fall sports in the Mountain West Conference postponed indefinitely because of COVID-19, including Aztec football. Hector Trujillo is an SDSU alum and considers himself a super fan. I totally agree with that sentiment that the, uh, the priority is safe, the safety and the health of the players and everybody that's part of the program. The news of the postponement comes just a week before another major milestone for the future of SDSU. It's probably a little bit counterintuitive that on Monday, next Monday, we break ground on a new football stadium and we can't even play in the existing stadium. Jack McGrory is a California State University Board of Trustee and was instrumental in the deal for SDSU West. He thinks the conference made the right call. Football is just a really hard sport to uh, distance, socially distance when you're <laughs> pushing people around the field with 22 guys there and, you know, blowing everything around. SDSU's athletic director says they are working with student athletes and coaches to prepare for rescheduling of the season and are looking to the spring as a possibility. It's got to be a huge disappointment for the student athletes. For fans like Trujillo, a decision they understand for the health of everyone involved. Well, it's going to be more exciting when it does come back. It's going to be like not having seen a family member or a friend for a long time. Laura Acevedo, ABC 10 News. San Diego State's athletic director is expected to talk about the fall postponement tomorrow at 1 o'clock. California's top public health officer has resigned. Dr. Sonia Angel did not say in her resignation letter why she stepped down, but it comes just days after the state announced a computer glitch that caused a major backlog of reporting cases. This afternoon, Governor Gavin Newsom had only kind words for her. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Angel uh, for her leadership, her stewardship. Um, and, you know, it's one of those difficult things uh, when someone leaves that uh, you consider a friend, someone I respect, someone who was a real champion uh, of racial justice and social justice. It's the reason she was brought into the administration. Angel, who was director and state public health officer for the Department of Public Health, will now be replaced by two people. A family in La Jolla is dealing with unimaginable loss after a fire took much more than their home. I started hearing glass and breaking, and I go, what is going on? That's Pat Nissan. She lives next door to that two-story house on Caminito La Paz. She called 911. She says it started as a small fire that quickly turned deadly. Family members confirmed that an eight-year-old girl who is nonverbal and has severe autism and her 80-year-old grandfather died in that fire. The girl's father and her 10 year old sister did make it out. The father, though, suffered severe burns trying to rescue them.
You think about your family being in that same situation, it's doubly stressful. Um, add in that we're going through very tough times right now. The cause of that fire is under investigation. New at 11, a death investigation is also underway after a body was found in the East Village area. San Diego police say that the body was reported just before 730 tonight near Broadway and the five. The details are unclear right now, but CHP is handling that investigation. We've reached out to them. We're waiting to hear back more. After hours of debate, the Seattle City Council voted to approve the budget cuts to the city's police department. But the move falls short of the 50% slash that protesters were demanding and some city council members had promised. Less than $4 million of the department's $400 million annual budget will get cut. As many as 100 officers could lose their jobs through layoffs and attrition. This vote is going to reduce the police budget by less than 2%. That's not a defunding. Less than $3 million out of $170 million remaining in the SPD's budget this year instead of the 50% demanded by the movement. But council members say it's realistic of what can be done now and a down payment for bigger cuts to come next year. The council also restored the city's first black police chief's salary after it was cut by 40%. It will instead drop from $294,000 to $275,000 in the coming year.